Hi everyone, I'm going to do a quick review of section 7.3, which is, which uh, we learned some properties of the Laplace transform, and I'll do a couple example problems to show how we use them. So um, first of all, I've got here are the table of the Laplace transforms that we saw in the last section, which is going to continue to be useful to us. And then we have the table that they gave us in this section, in section 7.3, um, that gives us some of the properties that they go through in the chapter um, proving how they are. And I proved these more or less um, in class back before spring break. So I first want to just talk about a couple of the important properties that are on this table. So the first two we saw in the last video, this, these are the linearity property. And then the next one is what happens when you take the Laplace transform of some function that is multiplied by an exponential function. So what this says, this red property here, says that if you have something and you multiply it by an exponential function in the t universe, then in the Laplace s universe, that, that turns into just a translation, which you can see would kind of make that um, sort of easier to deal with. So the way we can think about this is, Exponential turns into translation. The next properties are what happens when you have a Laplace transform of the derivative of a function. And so that's all three of these right here. And make a nice little box around those. So we proved this first one where if you take the first derivative of a function, f prime, and then you take the Laplacian of that, it, you get the Laplacian of the original function, L of f, and then you end up multiplying, just multiplying it by an s. And then you have to subtract off this constant, which is the uh, value of the derivative at 0. And then this, these next two just follow uh, sort of obviously if you repeat the process um, over and over again. So if you take two derivatives, then you end up with two powers of s. And if you take n derivatives, you end up with n powers of s. And you also have to sort of subtract off all these lower order um, derivatives. And so the way to think about this one is that derivatives in the t universe uh, can get interpreted like polynomials in the S universe. Because you can see you've got all these powers of S, and these are like, um, this is like a polynomial here, um, these terms here. And so again, you can think about how that would be easier to deal with. And then the last property, we have uh, this one here. We'll draw our yellow S. So that's if we have a function that is multiplied by a power of t, and we take the Laplace of that, then that turns into a derivative of the Laplacian of the original function. Um, and so that's sort of like the opposite of this green property here. So the way we might write that is that uh, polynomials in the t universe are going to turn into derivatives in the S universe. So we just sort of swap back and forth. And we'll see how both of those properties will end up being interesting. So now I will just demonstrate how to use these properties to do a couple of the problems from the section. And we'll come back to those tables in a second. Uh, let's see. All right, I'm gonna do, turn this to black and we will do section 7.3 numbers 14 and 16. So we've got two functions. Uh, our first one is from problem 14 and it is f of t equals e to the 7t times sine squared of t and number 16 we'll call that function g of t 
we've got t times sine squared of t. I'm doing these problems together because I can make the observation that both of them have the sine squared in them. So now let's look at our table again. Here it is. And if we look at our f of t, we see that we've got our, let's see, we've got our sine squared t and then our exponential here. So that looks just like this property here if we only knew the Laplacian of sine squared. Maybe that should be a green circle like that. And then for the g of t, we have this um, t, just a single t, and then again our sine squared t. And so that looks just like our last property down here, our t to the n. Um, if only we knew the, there's our f of t, and so if only we knew our Laplacian of f of t. So if we have the Laplacian of sine squared t, then we could use these two properties, uh, the red one and then the yellow one, to solve our for the Laplace transform of f and g. So let's start off by not, not doing either of these particular problems, but let's just think about the Laplace transform of sine squared t. Now, our properties table is not going to help us out, um, but maybe our first table that has all the, the Laplacian uh, worked out for us, that might help us here. So here we are, we have our table of Laplace transforms back up, and we have some that have a sine, we, have, we know about sine and we know about cosine, but we don't know about the squared. So let's use a trig identity here. And so I'm going to look up, I actually looked up on Wikipedia the a, uh, a trig identity for sine squared. And so inside these curly braces, I can write what I looked up from Wikipedia, 1 minus cosine of 2t over 2. So is this going to help us out? It's nice that we've got no squared here anymore. Um, and if just that cosine 2t, that should be okay. We should be able to use uh, this guy right here with b equal to 2. Now, the 1 minus and the over 2 aren't a problem to us because we have the uh, linearity property of the Laplace transform. And so we can rewrite this as, I can pull out a 1 half times the Laplace transform of 1 minus 1 half Laplace transform of cosine 2t. Now we have 1 here and we have cosine 2t here, which we've got right here. So we should be good to go using the table now. So let's fill this in. So we get 1 half times 1 over s. That's the Laplacian of 1 minus 1 half times the Laplace transform of cosine 2t. So we get s over s squared plus 2 squared because remember we have b equals 2 in this case to be able to use that. And so now I'm just going to simplify uh, again. I'm just I'm actually going to write out this whole thing and I'm going to say the Laplacian of sine squared t equals 1 over 2s minus s over 2s squared plus 4. There's probably a couple different ways I could have written it, but it doesn't really matter here. So there we go. That's going to help us out. That's not the answer to the problem, but it's going to help us out. Okay, so now let's get some more space. 
And I'm gonna leave that uh, Laplace transform of sine squared up there because I know that we're gonna have to refer to it in a minute. So now let's do problem 14 from section 7.3. And what I want to calculate is the Laplace transform of e to the 7t times sine squared t. Uh, now I need to refer back to my properties of the Laplace transform, so let's get that table back up. Ta-da, there it is. And let's see. I'm going to use this property right here. And it's a little bit weird because there's this, you know, parenthesis S and then the parenthesis S minus A here, but I don't have a parenthesis S over here. But I could write one. Remember, this Laplace transform is a function of S. And sometimes I just don't write the parenthesis S because it's it's implied. It's just like sometimes you might write F instead of F of T. Well, now it's going to help me out if I have this. And so if I write it like this, then I can use this property. And so I know that this thing is going to equal the Laplace transform of F. Well, what's F? It is this right here. This is my F of T. So I can write sine squared T. And instead of being that function as a function of S, it's going to be that function as a function of S minus A. It's just a shift. And oops, what is A? I'm gonna erase that A and put it back to a seven because I have my A equals seven to use what we've got over there. So again, what does it mean that I have now of S minus seven? That means that everywhere I've got this Laplace transform of sine squared, which I already know about, I've got it up here, but this is a function of S. So instead of everywhere I have an S in here, I'm just gonna change that to an S minus seven. And that's why a translation is so easy to use. All you do is just change all the S's. So now I can write this out, one over two S minus seven minus S minus seven over two, I'm gonna do a big bracket there, S minus seven squared plus four. And that's it, that's my answer. I'm not even gonna bother simplifying. It's simple enough. So that's the answer to number 14, so pretty good. So now let's scoot down again. We'll do our uh, number 16. So problem 16 in section 7.3. We're looking for the Laplace transform of T times sine squared T. So I need to get my notes again. I'm gonna get my uh, table of Laplace transform properties again. There we go. And I also want to remind myself what the Laplace transform was of sine squared t. So I'll go find that back in my notes. There we go, I got it. So now I'm gonna use this property down here at the bottom, which is what happens when you multiply a function by a power of t and then take the Laplace transform of it. So if I used this, I'm gonna use this with n equals 1. So then this is going to equal the negative 1 to the 1 power, which is just negative. And then the first derivative, d d s, derivative with respect to s, because it's of the Laplace transform, which is a function of s, sine squared t of s. 
So now I just have to take the derivative of, you know, this function right up here. So now I'm going to uh, make my table smaller and give myself some room to do this derivative. So this is going to equal, I'm going to pull out the uh, negative, I'm going to keep that negative sign on the outside, and then I'm going to pull out the one half from both of these. Whoopsie, there we go. So negative one half, and then I can take the derivative, put some big brackets. The derivative of one over s is negative one over s squared. And I've still got a minus, and now we've got to do the quotient rule. So we've got low d high minus high d low. So the low is s squared plus four times d high is just one minus high s times d low is gonna be two s, just two s. And then all of that over s squared plus four squared. And we've got our big brackets there. So we'll just simplify this a little bit. So we get one over two s squared plus, now we see that our, uh, we get an s squared minus, we have an s squared minus two s squared. So, and then a positive four. So we can get four minus s squared. And we'll leave this the way it is, s squared plus four squared. And that's our answer. All right. And so that's just a couple of examples on uh, using the properties of the Laplace transforms that calculate Laplace transforms of more complicated functions. Whoops, whoops, whoops.